Hello everyone. I've tested a fair number of cheap welders, but I figured it was about time I checked out a cheap plasma cutter. Plasma cutters are all over the internet for prices starting around $200 or even a bit less. It seems like the vast majority of them are called a Cut 50, despite being from many different brands, having dramatically different looks, slightly different feature sets, and even different style torches in some case. Either way, there are an absolute plethora to choose from, and I decided I would find the cheapest one that had a pilot arc. What I ended up with is this S7 brand Cut 50. This model is available on Amazon for around $275, and it does have a pilot arc. The specs for this plasma cutter claim 10 to 50 amps of output, but the display on mine adjusts from 19 to 52 amps. We'll see how well it cuts and what the actual output is when we get to that point. The build quality, especially the feel of some of the plastics, is very cheap, but for the price, I can absolutely overlook that if it cuts well. In addition to the amperage knob, there is a second knob that is just labeled S, and that is actually a post-flow setting. So when you set this, well, it says anywhere from 0.1 to 6 seconds. I don't know how accurate that is, but it just adjusts the amount of time that the compressed air will continue to flow after you stop cutting, just to cool the torch down. As for the included accessories, there isn't a whole lot to say. The torch feels quite a lot cheaper than what I've used on a hypertherm plasma cutter, and it seems like fewer parts are replaceable. But that's not surprising, and it's not necessarily a problem. As long as it works okay, this torch feels fine. The work clamp cable is just stupid short. It's like four feet long. Luckily, the torch cable is much longer, but as it comes, you will have to be pretty close to an outlet or use an extension cord because unfortunately the power cord is also just over four feet long. The work clamp itself is, yeah, you know, pretty cheap and flimsy, but eh, it'll work fine. It also comes with a water separator regulator. It came with hose barbs, a little bit of hose so that you could get this all installed. Strangely, the hose barb threads aren't tapered and it doesn't come with washers or O-rings or anything like that to make them seal. It's just compressed air, it's not inert shielding gas, so a slight leak isn't a big deal. I just put a few extra wraps of thread tape on the threads and tightened it down. It'll seal good enough, it's just strange that they don't supply something with a proper seal. I installed one of my own uh, quick connect fittings on here, it doesn't come with that, but this is just quarter inch NPT threads and that did connect fine to this regulator, so I just went ahead and installed that and it's ready to go. So in the end, I only needed some Teflon tape and a quick connect fitting to get it all connected to my compressor and ready to go. So not bad. Another thing it came with that is a little bit annoying to me personally is it came with a little card offering a $10 Amazon gift card for a product review on Amazon. It's by far not the first product from Amazon that I've got that had something like that. And it's not that big a deal. It's not like a paid product review is necessarily a bad thing, but when you see a bunch of positive reviews for something like this, just bear in mind, everybody that buys one gets a $10 incentive for putting a review on there. So just something to keep in mind. But anyway, let's cut some stuff up and see how this thing does. All right, before we get into the performance, for context, I have previous experience with a Hypertherm PowerMax 30 XP. So I will be making comparisons to that. I realize they are dramatically different price levels, but that's what I have experience with, so that's my point of comparison. Obviously, price has to be taken into account, and this Cut 50 is only $275, so keep that in mind. Also, I know that clean, dry air is important for a plasma cutter, and the 30XP was always used with the same compressor and air system that I used for this machine, so any benefit or detriment would have been the same for both. With that out of the way, let's go. When I set the Cut 50 at 30 amps on the display, it had far less cutting power than the 30XP, which maxes out at 30 amps. When set at 30 amps, the Cut 50 was slow to cut 3 16 material, and it was very difficult to pierce 3 16 The 30XP will pierce 3 16 plate almost instantly. The Cut 50 didn't even cut 1 8 inch material all that well when it was set to 30 amps. It can provide fairly decent gouging when turned down though. Here I'm just messing around, but you can see that when turned down, it would probably work well for burning off a bolt head or something like that. 
but strictly when cutting, unless you're cutting really thin material, you'll probably want to keep it turned up. When maxed out with the display showing 52 amps, it has decent power. It'll cut 3 8 inch material without too much trouble. However, despite being rated at 50 amps, I don't think it has more cutting power than the PowerMax 30XP. In fact, I think I'd have to give a slight edge to the 30XP in terms of cutting speed and power. My guess is that the difference comes down to a more efficient torch design on the hypertherm and possibly higher arc voltage. I tested the actual amperage output that this Cut50 provides and I found that the output doesn't match the display and it doesn't have 50 amps of output. I tested at several different settings and while the display adjustment range goes from 19 to 52, the actual output goes from about 15 to 38 amps. When maxed out, it would sometimes go above 40 amps when I first started a cut, but it would quickly drop down to around 38 amps. I have tested the output of the PowerMax 30XP before, and it gives a rock solid 30 amps of output when set to 30 amps. So this Cut50 does reach a higher max output than the 30XP, but it's a fair amount off of the 50 amps that it claims to give, and it's quite a bit less than the display shows at any given setting. I never tested the arc voltage of the 30XP, but the spec says 125 volts. I did test the arc voltage of this machine, and when set to max output, the highest I saw was bouncing between 100 to 130 volts or so, and sometimes it was actually less than 100 volts. Power aside, it doesn't cut as clean as the 30XP. The cuts generally had more dross and a less consistent, smooth, crisp edge. The increased dross was something I noticed immediately on the very first cut. It had much more than I'm used to. I initially thought I must have gone too slow, but after more testing, I found that that was not the case. It simply leaves more dross than I'm used to. No big deal, just how it is. Overall though, the cut quality isn't too bad considering it's only $275, but it's definitely no match for the hypertherm, which probably surprises no one. Overall, compared to what I'm used to, this Cut50 doesn't cut as clean, doesn't cut as fast, and it seems to be a bit more picky about travel speed. It also doesn't have a warranty, the build quality is a bit chintzy, the instruction manual is pretty poor, the work clamp cable is too short, and it doesn't provide nearly the amperage it says it does. Basically, it's got a lot of the typical generic product foibles. But it did work out of the box, the pilot arc worked well, and it can cut fairly thick material if needed. Extra consumables are relatively inexpensive, and like all plasma cutters, it's like playing with a mini lightsaber, but this one only costs $275. It's probably good enough for the average home garage as long as it holds up well. With no warranty, you kind of have to cross your fingers, so Here's hoping. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like me to test out with this plasma cutter, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.